Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from the future here. I've just finished editing this video and I honestly didn't realize how long it was actually going to take to set this up, which I apologize for, but unfortunately they can't really be any faster. So if you do want to download the files for this, then you can do that by checking out the link in the description, which will send you to Patreon. Um, you'll be able to help support the channel and also get your name at the end of every video if that's something you want to you wanted to help do. So rather than keep talking, let's yeah, let's get started. Hey everyone, so welcome to the first UE5 tutorial for the channel, I think. We did a couple of live streams, but this will be the first tutorial. And we're gonna actually cover the smooth logo motion system, except we're gonna do it in UE5 this time because there's some considerable changes that need to be done, as well as some improvements from the last lot of code that we had. Um, for this tutorial, I'm actually gonna be using the Valve Index this time, just because I've already got it set up. And we're pretty much gonna try and cover everything. It's gonna be a long one, so rather than just keep talking, we're gonna just jump right in. So I'm in the VR template. I just made a brand new one. The first thing we need to do is set up our inputs and we're going to do that by going to edit project settings and then input and we're going to need to add two action mappings previously we had to add all of our movement stuff so our movement axis right and left and everything else but we've already got that so we're just going to go to action mappings we're going to create a new one and we're going to call this jump and then we're going to make another one and we're going to call it sprint. We're going to use these to let us to basically jump and sprint. Exactly what they say. So in this one, I'm going to actually set up four different controller inputs because I want to cover, I want to kind of stick with what's going on already in the project. So if we have a look, we've got Oculus, Valve, Mixed Reality, and then Vive. I want to kind of keep that going here. So the first thing I'm going to add is the Oculus. And for jump, I want it to be the Oculus right A button press so yep right press then we're gonna hit the play and then we're gonna add the I think it's valve mic valve index and then it's gonna be right A pressed we'll do we might as well just add another two so the next one is gonna be Windows mixed reality and to this one I don't actually have a mixed reality headset so I'm gonna set this to trackpad up uh, trackpad up and then the last one is the Vive. So we'll search for HTC Vive, right trackpad up as well. And then Sprint, we're gonna do the Oculus Touch, and this will be the left thumbstick. Then we have the Valve Index thumbstick. So left thumbstick, let's just do Windows Mixed Reality. This is, it's got a thumbstick, so we're gonna do left thumbstick. And then the last one is the Vive left trackpad up. And that's pretty much it for our action mapping for our, our jump and sprint. Everything else is already included and should have input set up. So that's fine. And while we're here, we're actually going to change or make some settings, make some changes to our collisions that are already inside Unreal as we need to add some new ones. In the last example, or in the UE4 project, we used the object channels. But this time we're actually going to create a new preset. So we're going to go to new. And in here we can actually create a preset which we can select. And I'm going to call it VR interactable. Collision type we're going to set to collision enabled query and physics. And then we're going to set our worlds for our object type to physics body. And for the description I'm just going to copy and paste something I've already got. Which is add to any VR interactable to stop it colliding with the player. So basically that's what it's gonna do. So our collision profile is gonna stop our objects when we pick it up colliding with ourselves. If we let go of it, we will be able to kick that object around because it'll turn back into a physics object. But I'm gonna cover that at the very end if you don't want that. So that'd be like a little extra. So make sure to stay to the end for that. The next thing we gotta do is set our pawn type be overlap. And now we can just say accept. And you'll see that we've got our VR interactable now in our list. Now we have our inputs and collisions sorted. We can actually close this window down and we can find our VR pawn. So that should be in our VR template, blueprints, and we've got our VR pawn class right here. 
So I'm going to dock that window. And the first thing we're going to do is actually go to class settings and we're going to change our pairing class. At the minute it's pawn. We need this to be a character. And you'll see that if you keep an eye on the left hand side on our components tab, when we hit the character, we actually get a couple of new things. And the main one is our capsule component, which we're going to use. So we're going to use this to control everything. But before we can actually start coding, we need to add a new component. And we just need to do this by searching scene and then go down to utility. You see here, we've got a scene component. We're going to call this VR origin. And now what we can do is we can actually select everything apart from our origin. So camera, motion controller left, widget interaction, motion controller right, widget interaction right, teleport, trace, Niagara system. And we're going to actually put those inside of our VR origin. You'll see it breaks the child hierarchy that was already in there. So we're going to move our widget interaction left back to our controller and our right back onto our controller. And now if we jump over to our viewport, we can actually select our VR origin and we can move this to the ground, which is what we need to do. So I'm going to move this down. It should be minus 90 which is exactly what we're after. And if we hit compile and we jump over to our VR template, we press G so it shows our edit stuff. We need to move our player start so it's not clipping into the floor. So around there should be fine. And I normally put auto receive input to player zero. So just on the right hand side in the details panel, once you've got it selected, just change the auto receive input to player zero. Normally helps. So now if we press play, we'd actually jump into the scene, but we're not going to be able to do anything yet. Now back in our VR pawn, we can actually go over to our event graph. And the first thing we're going to do is actually set up our snap rotation. And if you have a look at the top of the graph, you can see that we already have a movement axis input left snap turn. We've already got this included. We're going to kind of, we're going to delete this and we're going to redo it. The reason for this is because it's not really set up for room scale. And I find it didn't work when I tried it in the last test. And we're going to delete everything apart from the event because we're going to need that. And now we have our movement access left. We're actually going to right click search event movement access right X is the one that we want because the idea here is at the minute teleportation snap rotation was on the left in the default template. But when we move to our smooth local motion system, we're going to switch the, the snap rotation to our right hand. So it just feels a little bit more natural. And then we'll create a menu system where we can switch back and forth. So this works really well to help us switch that. Now we've got our events. We can actually create a variable bool. So this is going to be a Boolean and we're going to call it use smooth locomotion. And then we're going to drag in a reference to that. I'm going to get um, by default, this will be false, but we'll set this to true just for now. So we can test it later. And then we're going to create two branches. It's kind of the same on both sides, but they will sync up. So we'll do this one here like so. And we're going to use this use smooth local motion to control which thumbstick has our snap rotation on it. But before we move on, we need to actually right click on our access value and we're going to promote to variable. I'm going to rename this to input access value. So if we do rename and just add input. You could keep it as access value if you want to entirely up to you, but we're going to plug the one from our movement access right X from our true channel. And then we're actually going to duplicate it. So I'm just going to do control W, move it down. And then I'm going to connect the movement X left X to that value instead. And instead of going from the true, we're going to actually have this from the false. So if we tidy this up just so we can see how it looks a little bit easier. And now we can actually add another branch. So this time it's going to actually connect to both of them. And now we're actually going to use this input access value to determine which one we use. So we need to get our input access value. We're going to get and then we're going to drag off and we're going to search absolute. So what this does is it converts a negative into a positive and a positive into a positive. So no matter what the value is, it essentially removes the negative. So if it's greater than one, essentially what it'll be, then we can use it to control this. And from there, we're going to drag off and we're going to do a greater than. And this is where we can have a dead zone. So the amount of movement you push on the thumbstick will control whereabouts you actually start to move. So you normally have this a little bit earlier on, but we're going to right click and promote a variable. I'm going to call this turn dead zone and move that down like so. And then we also want to drag off our input access value. Do a greater than and leave that just over here. So should look like so. And our first greater than 
we're actually going to plug into our condition. And um, before I forget, we need to actually set our turn dead zone value. So I'm going to compile and I'm going to set this to 0 0.2. If you set this to 0 0.5, you'll essentially have to push the stick halfway before it actually registers, which might be what you're after. But in this case, I want it to be a little bit more sensitive. So now I can hit B again to create another branch. And we're going to have this from the true value and connect that to our input access. Now we have our fourth branch, I think. <laughs> yeah. We can actually create another float variable and we're going to call this snap rotation. Actually, let's call it snap rotation value so we know what it is. And we need to make sure this is a float. And we're actually going to duplicate this and call another one snap rotation angle. So rename angle. And what this is going to do is this will be the one that we choose how much we can snap. So I'm going to drag the rotation angle in first. We'll do a get a compile. And I'm going to I'm going to set this to a value of 30. I normally find that's quite nice. You can go higher or lower depending on what you want. So now we've got that in. We can actually drag in two set rotation values. So we're going to set this twice. And I'm just going to do a control W with selected. And we're going to have one into the true value and one into the false. Like so. And from our true, we're just going to connect that to our snap value. And from our snap rotation angle, we're actually going to so for our second one, we're actually going to invert it. So we're going to have a multiply. So shift star to get a multiply. And then rather than having it in the top pin, we're going to disconnect and I'm going to connect to the bottom one and I'm going to type in minus one. Then we can plug that into our snap rotation value. So essentially once this is going, if it's false, then it'll be going the opposite direction. So just to cover what we've got so far, we basically have our inputs. We check to see if smooth locomotion is enabled. If it is, we go through and we get our input access value. We then check to see if that input access value is greater than a value of 0.2. Yep. And then if it is, we go through our branch. Then we check to see if our input access value is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, it means we're going forward. So it'll be clockwise. And then if it's not, then this won't fire. So it goes to the false channel, which means we're going the opposite direction. And now we need to connect this to a do once. So do once and we hook these both up. And from our do once, we're going to need a sequence. Because we need to fire this twice. And rather than going from our zero, we're going to go straight to our then one. Then we'll search for a delay. And I'm going to put this underneath here. And I'm just going to do some pins to make this to make this look a little bit nicer. And then we reset. And I'm actually going to just make these go around like so. So that makes it a little bit nicer to look at, a bit more understanding, even though it's just spaghetti noodles. <laughs> and now we can actually set our actor rotation. So we're going to search set actor rotation and we're going to split our rotation pins. And now we need to actually get our actor rotation So get actor rotation. We're going to split this again. And this time we're actually going to get our snap rotation value. So we're going to get, and then from our return value Z, we're actually going to add these values together and then plug that into our Z rotation or our new rotation Z. And that's it for our snap rotation. So we got our inputs. If we're using smooth locomotion, we'll get our input access value. If we're not, we do the exact same thing. So what we got is we got our input access values, then go to our branch. We then check to see if our input access value, so this value here, is an absolute. So we're converting it from a, a minus or a negative to a positive. And then we check that against our turn dead zone. So if it's greater than, then we can go through. You could actually remove this, but it just makes it a little bit more awkward. Then we see if our input is greater than zero if it if it is greater than zero then we know we snap rotation on one angle so we're just going to add 30 degrees if it's false that means we're going the opposite direction then we're going to remove that 30 degrees from the snap rotation value we do all that once and then we delay for 0.2 seconds so it'll end up looping so if you want to change the speed that you should actually snap rotate you can do that here you can just set this to zero and it should do a smooth movement might be wrong but just give it a shot and then the higher that number is, the longer it'll take you to actually rotate around. We then set our actor rotation. So we've got our self, so the blueprint. And then we're just taking our snap rotation value from 
what we've got, then we're adding it to the current actor rotation, which helps us move. So let's select everything here. We're going to do a C for comment. Now I zoom in, we're just going to do snap rotation uh, with hand switch, because we've essentially got the option to switch which hand we use. And to make this match everything else, I am going to select another comment, drag the color onto the top, and then we can make these all match. So that is our snap rotation. And now what we can do is we can actually set up our set up our room scale movement to make our capsule follow our camera. Because if we don't do that now, if we move around in the real world, our body or player will essentially stay in the same place. So we'll move around. So when we rotate, we'll end up pivoting around that one spot rather than being in the center and then rotating on the spot. So to do that, to do that, we first need to create a custom event. I'm going to find some free space. I'm going to do it over here. And we're actually going to do this slightly different to how we did it before, because in the last example, we had it on fire every tick, and it's quite expensive. In this blueprint, if we have a look real quick, doesn't actually use event tick anywhere in it. So it's really good for performance. So we're going to keep with that, and we're going to make this a little bit better for the end user essentially. So we've got our custom event. We're going to call this update room scale movement. And then we're going to drag off and we're going to do add actor. And then we're going to add a world offset. So we'll do add world offset. And you'll see here we've got in brackets a couple of options. We want to make sure we check we check our VR origin. So once we select that, you'll see that the target is our VR origin, which is located on the left here. Now what we can do is actually select our camera and our capsule and bring these in as references because we're going to use these to subtract from each other to get the actual position. So from both of these, we're going to do get world location, which we're then going to subtract from each other. So we select the first, the top pin, we're going to do subtract. And I realize we want to change the order of these just so it's a bit more understandable. So like so, and we're going to have it connect to the bottom one, connect to the top one. So it should look like this. Make sure your camera and capsule. So camera's on top, capsule's on the bottom. And then from our negative pin, we're actually going to right click and we're going to split pin. We're then going to do the same thing for our delta location. So split pin. And we're going to connect our delta location X to our X and our delta location Y to our Y. So if we move this over a little bit, we can now negate our Z. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our X. And what we need to do is actually right click and search negate. So from what I understand, a negate is essentially a subtraction. You subtract different axis and then you get an output. And what we're going to do is we're going to split our A pin and connect it to our X and our Y to our Y. We don't need to worry about Z because that's not being changed. But now what we can do is we can connect our return value to our delta location. And that's pretty much it for our room scale movement. So you'll notice that at this point, our custom event isn't being told to fire. In the last example, we had this fire from the event tick which meant every frame this code was updating. And it doesn't actually have to be like that. We can delay that amount. So it's better for performance and the amount that it's updated. In. And to do that, we're actually gonna use something called the set timer by function name. And before we do that, we're gonna make sure we copy our name of our customer event. So if we go over to our left, you'll find begin play. We're actually gonna use this. So It'll only fire once, so then we'll do we'll do set timer function by name, and you see that here. So set a timer to execute delegate. Setting an exist existing timer will reset the timer when update parameters. So that's fine. First thing we're going to do is set looping to true, and our time to 0.3. You can actually go further, so higher up. But this just makes it so it's not firing all the time because you don't need it to. It, it doesn't have to be that responsive. If you do need it to be a lot quicker, then you could actually update that to be a little bit faster. So reduce the value to 0.2, something along those lines. But in this case, I found 0.3 works really well. Now a function name, we're going to actually just copy and paste in our custom event name. And now that's pretty much it. So every 0.3 seconds, our custom event will fire. So if I do a print string and show you this, so I can actually show this a little bit better. So now that we've set our capsule from hidden in game to false, we can press play and you'll see that we have a capsule on our player. 
And if I move it, you can see it updates. It's like a snapping effect. And then you can see how often it updates on the player. So you can see how moving around, it doesn't actually have to update extremely precisely to keep up to it. And then if we change this to say, let's update every 0.6 seconds, and then we try it again, you'll see that it now takes longer to update, but it's still doing the same thing. We've just removed it from being on tick, which would be extremely expensive. So 0.3. And now, now it works, we can just delete that print string. And I'm going to make sure these are set to teleport. So we can actually comment our code now. So C underscore, or just select everything, do C on the keyboard. And then we set this to update room scale movement. And then we do dash using using set timer by event. Change the color of this comment. So now that we have our room scale movement set up, we can actually right click and do custom event. We're gonna look at setting up our capsule height. So at the minute we can't crouch and get under things. So I'm gonna call this, so I'm gonna call this update capsule height. So we do rename update capsule height. We're gonna leave this here for a second because we need to go back to our event begin play as there's a couple of things we need to do in here. First, we've got to get a reference to our capsule component and then we're gonna get capsule half height right there and then we're actually going to promote this to a variable so we're just going to right click on the pin promote a variable we'll get capsule half height and we're going to connect this to our event begin play and while we're here we can actually copy and paste this set time of function by name so control c control v plug this on the end and we're actually going to change the function name and the length so i'm actually going to do this at 0.5 so it doesn't fire at the same time as our set timer by function name so they're kind of offset that just helps a little bit as well so we're going to copy our names and then we're going to paste that in. And now we actually have our capsule component where we're setting our capsule height on start. We then fire that event every 0.35 seconds. So we can then fire this pin. So we're going to get a capsule component reference again. And then we're going to set, we're going to drag off and do set capsule size. Connect like so. And then we're going to get uh, capsule scale radius get scaled capsule radius that's the one we're going to use and we're going to plug that into our radius so the next thing to do is actually get our orientation and position which we can see here under head mounted so get orientation position and we're going to split our device position pin so we can access our z position and from here we're going to drag off and we're going to actually divide this so we're going to do a slash to get divide pin and we're going to divide this by two so that's essentially getting our half height for where our and then we're going to add to it so we're going to add a float let's drag off and then just do a plus it's a bit easier and then we're going to add 10. what this does essentially is it takes our capsule height and it adds a little bit on top of our head so rather than our capsule being in line with our eyes it adds a little bit more to cover the top that's just so we don't start walking through things so we're going to connect that to our half height and then we're going to add relative location so we're going to drag off our execute pin we're going to add relative location and we want to make sure this is our VR origin, which we're going to split the pin on. And then we need to get our capsule half height. So we've got our float variable. We're going to get that and we're going to subtract it from our plus 10. And this is going to connect directly to our delta location where we will set our capsule half height. So we're going to drag in a reference to our capsule half height. We're going to set it and we're set to the same value here. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to go on a little bit further. And we're going to make it so if you crouch in the real world, your player moves slower. And to do that, we need to drag off our pin and we need to search less. And then we're going to do a branch. And we're going to connect this up like so. And from here on our less than, we're going to right click and we're going to promote a variable. And I'm going to call this crouch height. And what this is essentially saying is if we are less than a certain amount of units, so when we crouch, we're less than a, the capsule half height, then we'll be crouching. And then that allows to update some stuff. So I'm going to set our crouch height to 60. So you can actually make this go lower. So if you do it 30, you'll have to pretty much be really low down on the ground. But you can play around with this value to see what's more comfortable for, for you and your game, essentially. But now that we have that, we can actually drag in a reference to our character movement component. And then if we drag off this, we can set max walk speed. And we're going to do this twice. So currently by default, our player's max walk speed is set to 600, but I'm going to change that later on and we'll cover that in a little bit. But for now, I'm actually going to set this to, if we're, if we're less than and we're crouching, it's going to be set to 150 because I'm essentially going to half it. And then if we're not, our walk speed will be set to 300 by default. So when we're crouching, 
will walk half the speed of when we're we're walking <laughs> when we're stood up. So it's a bit like in an ordinary game where you crouch and you walk slower. Whereas if you stand up, you can you can move fast. So that's pretty much it for our update capsule height. So we're going to put a comment around that. And I'm going to name this update capsule height dash based on player's position. Now what we can do is actually look at the movement mechanics. So we can say if we're using the left thumbstick, we move around the scene. And to do this, we actually need to bring in two events. So now we're actually looking for movement axis left x and movement axis axis left y. Now that we've got both of these events, we can get a reference to our use smooth locomotion. Don't worry about these being organized. I'll show you how to do it in a little bit. This is Jonathan from the future trying to catch up in the video. So once we've got our smooth logo motion, we then need to create two branches and connect them like so. So now we've got our branches, we can actually create a new variable and we're going to call this movement dead zone and it needs to be a float. Now you remember before we had a, our other dead zone set to 0.2. So I'm going to do the exact same thing and I'm going to drag in a reference to this, then duplicate it down below. And what we need to do now is actually from our axis value, we want to get an absolute. So this converts it from a negative to a positive. And then we're going to do the same for the bottom. And then we're going to check to see if it's greater than. So we'll drag off, we'll do greater. And then we're going to copy and paste this down, same as before. And then we're going to add two new branches. So branch, branch. Let's hook up them first. And we want both of these on the true. Now what we can do is we can drag off our true and we can do add movement input. And uh, we'll need this for both. And we're actually going to use our camera to control what direction we move in. So we take the camera as a reference. And on the top one, we want to drag, we want to drag off and search get, get right vector. And plug that into our world direction. And then from our Bottom one, we're going to copy our camera reference, then we're going to search get forward vector. Plug that in like so. And then the last thing we need to do is take our access value, and I'm going to do some pins. So use the period key on the keyboard to add some reroute nodes. Connect these like so. And now we can actually add a comment around both of these called thumbstick movement. Don't really need to add anything else. That's pretty much it. And now we've got this, we need to tell our thumbstick. So once we push on the thumbstick, not to teleport. So we're going to have a look around and in here, you'll see that we have movement access input, right? Teleport. We're actually going to add a branch before the first one that's already there. Connect it like so. And from the false channel, we're going to connect it to the branch and we're going to use our use smooth locomotion. So if it's set to true, then we're using our smooth locomotion. If it's set to false, we want to teleport. Hit compile and save. And now we can set up our jump and sprint. So if you remember earlier, I mentioned about the character movement in our walk speed was set to 300. Now is where I'm going to change that. I'm going to set our max walks to be 300. because It seems a little bit nicer in VR. So we got that. And now we can actually control our jump. And to do that, we're actually going to right click and we'll do, if we search for jump, you should find action event jump. And from pressed, you literally just drag off and search jump. And that's as easy as that is. So comment around that, we'll type it jump. And now for our sprint, we're going to right click and we we'll search sprint. So we get action event. And this time we want to drag in a reference to our character. And from our character movement, we can do the same thing we did with the crouch. We can set our max walk speed on the top and then on the released. And on pressed, I'm going to say that we, we sprint double our walk speed. So that'd be 600 now. And then we'll return to 300, which is our default walk speed. So see, comment sprint dash change walk speed and now because we're pretty much done with our player pawn that's kind of everything already set up what we need to do now is just organize our components and the first thing we do is select our use smooth location and create a category for it so smooth locomotion and now i can go through and select everything linked to our smooth locomotion content will be placed into that category. Just works well to keep everything organized. 
And now we can actually load that and you see we've cleaned it back up. So compile and save. And now we're actually gonna fix our grabbing. So if we press play and we jump into the scene, see I'm falling through the floor. Not sure why. So, so after we've finished everything, if you press play, you'll find that you fall through the floor. That's because I made a mistake in our update capsule height. I have our capsule height connected to our negative pin when it should in fact be connected to our positive pin. So if we hook this around and then we update it that way, then hit compile and play, you'll see that we actually stand on the ground. <laughs> so that was a mistake on my end. So now if we jump in, yeah, controls ready. You see that we can actually move around, we can jump, we can sprint, which is super cool. And then we can actually snap turn as well. And you see it's pretty snappy, which is exactly what we're after. But if we try and grab objects, you'll see we can't actually do that anymore. The reason for this is something to do with this setup breaks part of the code that's already included in the project. So if we scroll out and we're going to move over to the left, we're going to look for our grab left and our grab right. In here is a function called get grab component near motion controller grip position. If we open this up, I'll explain what's going on is when it's fired, we go through and we get the motion controller data. And this is being received from the cross open XR system that's basically put in as a plugin. For some reason, once we change from a pawn to a character, this no longer works. So if I draw a debug for duration and then we compile and save play, we should actually be able to see when I grip show up. It should be around here somewhere. Nope, I don't think it's gonna show up. But basically our grip sphere isn't in the location that we need it to be in. And to fix this, all we have to do is move our motion controller down. So our reference, and we're gonna disconnect this chunk here. So pretty much everything that you see highlighted here is gonna be disconnected. And we're just gonna use the motion controller. So we're gonna drag off that. We'll do get world location and then connect that the sequence to our set and just connect our get world location. So if we hit compile and save now, since we have our draw debug for duration, when I actually grab my object, we can see now we've got ours. So if I move over to an object, you can see I can now pick it up and I can drop it. But if we bring it close to us and then if we have it outside our collision, but then we have it in our collision, we walk around, you'll see that we actually start moving based on the location that the cube is interacting with us. So that's the bit that we're going to fix now. If anybody has an idea of how to actually make this piece of code work, with the project and get the position because it actually just changes the value to minus 90, then I'd love to know how. I did try messing around with the world context and a couple of other things, but I just couldn't get it to work with that bit included. So for now, I'm just gonna remove it. And now we've done this, we're actually gonna go back to our VR template map so we can go to our content browser. And we're gonna search for our grab component. So this one here, and you'll see that it opens us, opens us up into a function called try grab. We actually want to look for our event graph and in here we're actually going to change this set collision profile name to VR interactable. So that's the exact same one that we created earlier in our custom collision. So if I go to project setting presets, you can see we've got VR interactable. Uh, you can just copy and paste this if you want to be lazy. And then in our grab component, we just want to change this in collision profile name to our new one. Then hit compile and save. And now we can actually go over to our VR template and we can open up our grabbable small cube. But it's just a matter of selecting our static map, scrolling down on the right hand side and changing our collision preset to be our VR interactable. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to do it with our pistol as well. Skeletal mesh gun. Scroll right down from physics actor collision preset to VR interactable. Hit compile and save. And now if we press play and jump in, you can see we can still move around. But this time, if I pick up an object and I'm inside, if it's inside my collision, then we don't actually move away from it. it. Does a little hang in the air the first time you pick it up, which is a bit strange. But we can still do everything else. And this is a good example to show that if we jump on stuff, we can actually kick it around. And I'll also show you how to change the size of our collision. So we'll do that now before moving on to our menu. So we'll close these down. Uh, we'll keep our VR pawn open. 
And in our VR pawn, if we select capsule component, we can change our capsule radius. I'm going to set this to 15, so it'll be considerably smaller. It'll still be quite accurate. If you hang on till the end, I'll show you how you can do it to, to not kick objects if you don't want to be able to do that. But it takes a little bit more work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to VR template. And in here, we're actually going to set up a menu. So by default, there is a menu already made for us in the VR template. And we can find it here in the widget menu. So if we open this up, you'll see that we've got our widget that says restart in real life. The thing is, if you're working on a valve index, the system buttons don't let you actually open this. So in this case, I actually need to change my inputs. So in the input tab, again, we have two sections called toggle menu left and toggle right. I'm going to drop these down so I can change the valve index from left system to one of the buttons. So valve index left and I'll do left controller and I'll do B because I'm not using it. So B press and then toggle menu on the right valve index system. Let's just remove that one. So that's how we want to have it. So now if I press play and just tilt the headset, should be able to pick up the left controller. And you see if I press B, we get a menu we can interact with. While we're in our VR pawn, let's quickly set our sphere trace back to none. So we don't have to worry about it. And then we can actually close our VR pawn because we're done with it. And we can go over to our widget menu. I know we're a bit all over the place, but it's just a lot to do. And what we want to do is actually drag in a horizontal box. So just search horizontal box. And I'm going to drag this into our vertical box, which makes it move to the bottom. And then in here, I'm just going to add some text. So add a text to our horizontal box. And I'm also going to add a checkbox. Select our text and where it says padding. On our right, we're going to add four. And then our checkbox, if we select that as well, let's keep it to auto. What we'll do is we'll add four to our left so technically eight but we've got a little bit more control over it and now in our text box so our text block we can actually add use smooth locomotion if i spell it correctly locomotion so it makes it a little bit bigger need a space so this can be anything that you want it to be so now we have our text so smooth use smooth locomotion with our tick box we can actually set this up so when we tick the box we enable smooth locomotion and then when it's false, then we don't. So if we move over to our graph, just in the top right, actually what I'm gonna to do to keep everything organized is select our text. And you see on the top it says details, we've got text block. I'm actually gonna set this to text underscore use teleportation. And then our checkbox, I'm gonna call checkbox underscore the same, use teleportation. So now, if we press compile and we go over to our graph, so here in the top right, we can actually see which one it is and what it does. So first thing we do is select our checkbox and we do the green unchecked. So if I show you that again, we'll do unchecked state changed. We're gonna hit the view and that'll create this event for us. And we're gonna start by getting our player pawn. So we're gonna right click, get player pawn. And then we're actually gonna to cast to our character. So our character is called VR pawn. So we're gonna do a cast to and you see here at the very bottom, we've got VR pawn. This will be whatever your player is called. So if you've got, if you're working with a custom player, then this will be different. And then from here, we're going to drag off and we'll have a branch, which will be connected to our is checked. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. And now in our VR pawn, we have that use locomotion. So we can actually drag off the, the as VR pin, as VR pawn pin and search use smooth Locomotion and we want to set this use smooth locomotion So this tick box will actually control it. So from true We're going to have it set to on and then false We'll have it set to off and make sure our target pin is also the VR and just as a heads up If you change the use use smooth locomotion in the editor So you can actually move around smoothly and then you change it back so you can teleport the teleportation Sometimes breaks so you have to restart the editor to make that kick in. I'm not too sure why but when you play it in the editor and then use this method to switch between, it works pretty well. So to finish this off, we need to actually get our event construct. And you can see here, we've already got one in the scene. I'm just gonna move it down so it's a little bit more organized. We know where everything is. And we're actually gonna copy our get player pawn, our VR cast, plus the branch. And we're gonna actually just move this down. So it should look like so. 
And rather than actually setting our use smooth locomotion, we're just going to get it. So we're going to drag off get use smooth locomotion, plug that into our condition. And now what we can do is we can actually say once our menu is open, we check to see what what state our use smooth locomotion is in. And we're just going to set our checkbox. So if we drag in a reference, we can then drag off and search set checked state. And we'll need two of these. So if it's true, we're going to have a little tick in it. So we'll say checked. And if it's false, we'll set it to unchecked by default and make sure it is the same target. So we compile and save and we can add a comment. So we do see use or enable smooth locomotion. And then if we drag this one down, we can have it see set checkbox. So that's pretty much all it's doing. So if we set these to match everything else, what we can do now is hit compile and save. And I think by default in our VR pawn, so I'm going to double check it quickly, our VR pawn, our use smooth locomotion, I believe is set to true. So I'm going to set this to false and I believe I'll need to restart my editor. I don't think the teleportation will work. So if I push forward, yep, yeah, we just snap to the pawn, the bottom. So I'm going to restart my editor, which I've just done. So if we jump in now, I should be able to put the headset on. And if I stand up and shout a little bit louder, just so you guys can hear then we can actually rotate with our left thumbstick on our point. And if we move our capsule updates with our headset, and I can press forward on the right stick to just teleport around, basically what we had at the very beginning. And now if I press the B button on the controller, you can see we get our use smooth locomotion menu. And if I point at the tick, the tick box and I press our trigger, you can see it gets a little tick. And now, I can actually use the left thumbstick to move around and the right thumbstick to snap. We can then pick everything up same as before, which is super cool. And I think if we head over to the ball, we might actually be able to make it rotate. That right, does it a little bit. We'll have to fix the collisions on that without punching the mic. But that's pretty much it. So. If you remember earlier on, I said that if we jump up, we actually kick everything around. I'm aware that some people might not want this, apart from that one for some reason. So now, if you don't actually want to be able to hit any of the objects, we need to go to our project settings. And in here, we're actually going to create a object channel. So we're going to create a new object channel. And we're going to call this new channel VR Interactable. Same as what we did before. And we're going to set the default response channel to block. And now in here, we're actually going to select our pawn. Set the pawn for his body. You see how we've got our VR interactable now. It should be on block by default, but I already had one set up previously for testing. So make sure it's set to ignore, hit accept. And then in our VR interactable, we want to select that. And we want to change our object type from physics body to VR interactable. Hit accept. If you test this now, it won't work. And now we actually have our VR interactable. Our pawn is set to ignore. Our VR interactable is set to object type VR interactable. Hit cancel. We're going to go to our VR pawn. So make sure it's the actual VR pawn. And if you remember in here, we were in, we went inside a function called get grab component near motion controller grip position. And to the right of where we remove the code, you'll see that we have an array or make array here, which is set to physics body. We actually want to set this to our VR interactable now. So once we hit compile and save, we get some kind of error. So let's check this out. Ah, it would be the other one. I think I removed. Yeah. So if you didn't delete the other one, you should be fine. But I'll just remove that from mine. And now if we hit play and we jump back in, see that we get our menu, we can move over and select our cubes and then drop those, pick up our gun. Okay, so we got to fix our bullets. So I'm not too sure what's going on with that. But we can crouch. And if I try and move forward, you see it moves really slow. But as soon as I stand up, we go back to full speed. So now let's figure out the bullets. So 
I realized to get our bullets working, we actually need to go back into our project settings and where we have overlap all dynamic, we need to just double click this and set our overlap to essentially our VR interactable to be overlap. And you can probably go through and do it on all of these. So overlap all would be overlap and then block all dynamic, kind of just follow through and see how it's already set up just to make it a bit easier for what you're after. So pawn vehicle, you can have it so it automatically ignores those. But I think for this, that's pretty much it. Uh, physics actor, yeah, that's block all. And then trigger, probably be overlap, vehicle, vehicle, UI, overlap, and then our normal setup. So that was pretty much a pain, but what we can do now is we can actually jump back in, press play, and if we open up the menu, and we point at our tick box, move around, we can pick up our cubes again, pick up our weapons, and then fire them, same as what we had before. So, or from you. So that is, that's finally it for this video. <laughs> so it's been one of a long one, but I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone in the Discord who's been waiting patiently for this, as well as everyone over on the Patreon. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you want access to the files for this, then you can do that by heading over to Patreon and sign up for the five pound tier, I believe it is, which you're able to download this project file. And then, yeah, so until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.